please put your questions in the chat box and we will do our the best to address every one of them. Kathy, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Gustavo. That was a wonderful introduction. I'm thrilled to be here today and to share my presentation on what your, what makes up your credit score. I am a business counselor with the Tualatin Business Recovery Center. So our center is a sister to the one in Beaverton. I have been a small business counselor since 2014 and have helped business owners gain access to over $4 million in loans and capital since June of this year. So I'm tickled to be with you. So how is your business credit score calculated? Well, it's a slightly different formula than what you might think. If you wanna think about it in another realm, <clears throat> excuse me, a lion and a tiger are both big cats, but they fill different roles in their own ecosystems. In the same way, your personal credit score and your business credit score have different roles as well. You might think of your lion as your personal credit score and your tiger as your business credit score. A lion is about five to 600 pounds. Tiger can get as large as 1,200 pounds. It's much bigger, it's much more powerful. So your personal credit score tells the history of how you have paid your personal bills. These could be your mortgage, your car loans, your credit cards. Usually on a personal credit, uh, you will not see things like rent or utilities simply because those entities usually don't report to the credit bureaus how you're doing. There are a few landlords that will report and you can ask for that to be done. So the higher your personal credit score, the lower is the interest rate on any loans and credit cards you want to get in the future. You can also, by the way, go back to any loans or credit cards you have. If your credit score has increased, they may lower your interest rate, which lowers your payments. Tiger, your business credit score. Like the tiger, which tends to hide more than the lions that have a tendency to just sit out on the savanna and go, I'm here, dude. A tiger will hide in the underbrush. Your business credit score is often a little more mysterious than your personal credit score because it's tougher to find out exactly what the formula is. So why is your business credit score important? Well, 41% of business owners who know their business credit score can get funding. They can get loans to increase the size of their business. 48% of business owners obtain credit based on a combination of their personal and business credit scores. So knowing what your score is, knowing how to increase it can make all the difference in the world. If you don't know your business credit score, you're not alone. About 72% of business owners do not know their business credit score. It's okay, we can find out. Having good business credit or opens doors for you, helps you qualify for funding, credit cards, business credit cards, SBA loans, the EIDL, bank loans and equity loans to help you grow your business. You can also get better financing terms from your vendors. So that helps you extend the life of your money. It increases your chances of getting government contracts to either sell your products to the government or to sell your services to the government. It reduces the cost of your insurance and any bonding that you have to buy. So it's a really good reason to increase your business credit score. For any journey, and this journey is learning what your credit score is, you need to know your starting point. To build your business credit, you need to know which agencies calculate your business credit score. Don't worry, I'm gonna be answering these in a second. 
what is a typical range for good business credit score? Where can you get your business credit score for free? We're going to handle this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which agencies calculate your business credit scores? Well, the three big ones are Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know where that came from. <clears throat> While there are other business credit bureaus, these are the three main ones for business credit reports. What is the typical range for good business credit score? I have to tell you, I've seen more than one of my clients look like this poor young lady here because business credit scores are listed on an entirely different framework. So before you faint, business credit scores often given on a scale of one to 100. If that's where your personal credit score is, fainting is probably allowed, you know? So with Experian, 80 to 100 is a good score. With Paydex, which is another business credit uh, scoring agency, 70 to 100 is a good score. Equifax has a totally different numerical framework. So with Equifax, 480 to 590 is pretty good. The top score is 580. And 590 is for people who are just absolutely perfect. The bottom score, the worst score you can get is a 224. So hopefully we're gonna keep you out of there. Won't get close. To qualify for an SBA guaranteed loan, you do need to be aware of your credit scores. Now, let me explain just very quickly what I'm talking about. A lot of people will use the shorthand. I have an SBA loan. That's actually incorrect. You have an SBA guaranteed loan. So what happens is you go to any lender that you want and you apply for an SBA guaranteed loan. What happens is if that bank, that credit union, that FinTech, whatever it is, if they approve your loan application and they are an SBA approved lender and only certain lenders are, but if they are an approved lender, usually the SBA will agree that this is a good loan to be funded. What happens is the SBA is literally stepping in to be your partner. And the SBA, Small Business Administration, is guaranteeing that if something happens to you, and we hope it doesn't, the SBA will step in and pay 80 to 85% of your loan, which means that there's very little debt for your family, but also there's very little exposure for the lender. So the lender isn't risking a lot of money because the SBA is going to help out if needed. So these kinds of SBA guaranteed loans are usually the least expensive interest you can get. That's why you want to get one. <laughs> okay. Prior to the pandemic, the Small Business Administration required a FICO small business score of 140 or higher. Uh, FICO is graded on a score of 1 to 300. Since the pandemic began, credit has tightened. This means it's a little bit tougher to get a loan. The new requirements are 155 required by the SBA for a loan, but many banks are asking for an even higher number, 160 to 165. So if you've got that, you can apply to the bank and get the loan. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. It's interesting that Experian takes into your credit score your social media. What I mean by this is Experian is actually monitoring your social media. They're finding out how quickly do you respond to any negative posts. Your reputation affects your ability to get financing. 
Right now, Experian is the only one of the three major credit bureaus for business credit scores that is monitoring social media, but anticipate the other two are gonna do it pretty soon. Okay, are there any other agencies that are reporting about your business? Yes, indeedy. And by the way, welcome everybody who's joined us. You will be getting a recording of this session. So if you missed the first few minutes, you will be able to catch up. It will be available in English and Spanish. And thank you for coming. So other credit bureaus that are reporting information about your business include LexisNexis, Credit Safe, the US Post Office. They will actually check how many boxes you shipped to estimate what your sales are. How's that for interesting? Small Business Financial Exchange, although it's not a credit bureau, it does report through Equifax. The information that the SBFE is collecting actually factors into your Equifax business credit report and the info group. Where can you get information about your business credit scores for free? Well, you've got a number of different options and this certainly helps. You can go to nav.com. It's like the word Navy, but no why. You put in a short profile about your business and it will actually give you your business credit scores for, for free from those three different agencies. If you just want the Dun & Bradstreet, you can go to Dun & Bradstreet and there's the link and get your credit score. You can also go straight to Experian and get your free credit report. So how is your business credit score calculated? Well, each of these different agencies is looking at this formula. Now how they weight the answers and how many gold stars you get, how many points you get really depends on the credit bureau. But basically these are the things they're looking at. So what is your payment history? How are you doing on paying your bills? What is the, excuse me, what is the amount of debt that you're currently carrying? How long have you been in business? Time in business actually affects a lot of different things. The SBA, by and large, will not approve an SBA guaranteed loan to a business that has been in operation less than three years. There are a few exceptions, but just be aware of that. Once you hit the three-year point, whoo -hoo, yay team, the age of your accounts. When did you open that credit card or that business loan? Or when did you start paying on that utility? The older your accounts, the more points you get because there's a longer record of payment. And on the negative side, there are public records judgments, bankruptcies, UCC filings, these things can bring down your credit report. And I am gonna go into it. What you need to know, how your payment history affects your business credit score. Just like with your personal credit score, if you pay before the due date, if you pay more than the minimum, your credit score goes up. You can, in business, select business credit cards, which do report to the credit bureaus. Not every business credit card does. So just be sure that your business credit card is reporting good news, of course, about you to the credit bureaus. Your credit score goes down because of days beyond term. Now, unlike a personal credit card, personal credit card or any debt. If you're one day late, it's counted as being 30 days late. So it's a block. So whether you're two days late, five days late, 25 days late, it's counted as 30 days late. In business, it's not done that way. It's actually counted by how many days you're beyond the due date. So if you're 11 days beyond the due date, it will report 11 days, not 30. This is an advantage for you. When you carry a high amount of debt in comparison to your credit limit, your score goes down. 
So let's say you've got a, a business credit card with a $5,000 limit. If your spending on that card takes it up to 4,900 and it sits there, that's going to bring your credit score down. So just remember to keep paying those things off. Okay. Mentioned earlier, derogatory public records. Some creditors will actually bypass your credit score and go straight to seeing what kind of public records there are on your business. So have there been any small claims judgments against the business? Have there been any tax liens, bankruptcies, or UCC filings on collateral? And that is something that occurs when you get a loan and the lender files a UCC filing laying claim to your collateral if you don't pay the loan. So when you finally pay off the loan, they're supposed to take that UCC filing off of your collateral. It may be trucks in your business, it may be computer equipment, but they're supposed to take that off. They often don't, so you do need to circle back to your lenders, make sure they've taken those off your credit rating. How long does negative stuff stay on your credit report? Well, bankruptcy can stay on as long as 10 years. Liens and judgment as long as seven years. So if something happens and there is a, a lien or a judgment, at the end of seven years, you can report to the credit bureau that that is paid in full. Even if the creditor, the person to whom you owed money, didn't report it, at least the credit bureau knows you paid it in full and it is no longer as bad on your credit rating as it was. You do need to ask the creditor to remove it again and again and again sometimes. So these are things you do need to be aware of. Also a collection like a, um, a bill that goes to a debt collector can stay on your record for as long as seven years. All right, what is time in business? Time in business is calculated from the day you formed your legal entity or you got your EIN. There are a couple of other things as well. So basically what I'm saying, did you get a trade name under which you're operating your business? Did you get a limited liability company in Oregon under which to operate your business? Did you incorporate? Those all have start dates because there's a day on which you pay your money to the state and that's uh, an indicative date of when you started in business. It could also be the day that you got your employer's identification number. So any of these will work to establish your date in your start date in business. And this start date is going to be the same start date, whether you're applying for a car loan or a lease or for a building or a credit card. So that date is not going to move, right? The SBA, as I mentioned, prefers you've been in business for three years before they give you a loan. All right, what is time and file? I also used the term earlier, what is the age of your accounts? Same thing. What it is, is what day did you start that particular account? Did you get a car loan on June 1st, 2019? That's the day it started. The older your accounts are, the more your credit rating can go up because it shows your ability over a longer period of time to pay your bills. Also, the greater the variety of your creditors, so it might be a car loan, credit cards, uh, vendor financing, the broader the number of creditors that you have, the better your credit portfolio looks. If all you have is one credit card, that's better than nothing. Uh, so it is a place to start and to build. When you wanna go after those larger loans in the future, like buying a building for your business, 
you really want to have a range of different types of credit that you have used responsibly. So what info is in your business credit report? It's your business start or registration date if you started an LLC, a corporation, or a trade name. It's the company profile. Who owns the company? How many employees are there? What are your sales? Do you have any subsidiaries, any smaller companies that belong to this big one? What is your past payment history? What is the number of accounts reporting to the credit bureaus? And are there any collections, liens, judgment, bankruptcies, or UCC filings? There are additional items that can appear on a business credit report. What is the historical data relating to your company? What's the operational data? What is your industry classification and data? Now, this could be your NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System, or your SIC code. This is a six digit or a four digit number that um, <laughs> pigeonholes your business into a particular description. Are you a medical clinic headed by a doctor doing traditional uh, medical treatments with patients? Or are you a Medi Spa, a spa that has skin treatments, massage therapy, uh, chiropractor, all under one roof? They actually have two different numbers and you qualify for different types of financing. So you do need to make sure your NAICS code is correct on your credit report because it can mess things up if it's wrong. Government activity summary, and this could be any um, contracts you have with the government or any government grants you have. What makes your business credit different from your personal credit? Well, Here's an interesting fact. On your personal credit report, as you know, they actually list the name of a particular credit card. On your business credit report, the name is usually not listed. It, it might just say a uh, credit card, the highest uh, balance you've ever held on it, the current balance, and what your credit limit is. But the credit limit sometimes is not listed. It's just interesting. Uh, if you made payments after the due date, you will have a little record of that on there. So just be aware of that. All right, when is your credit report pulled? Well, if you own a slice of the pie or a slice of the ownership of the company, that is 20% or more. So if you own 20% or more of a business, fully expect that any creditor is going to pull your credit report. Uh, we had an experience in Flagstaff where a microbrewery that had multiple people who wanted to start it were turned down for a loan because one of the people who did have more than 20% of the company didn't have good credit. And so even though the other five people were stellar, they couldn't make up for the one person with the negative credit. As a result, the loan was turned down and the business never went forward. All right, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna separate your business from your personal credit. You can do this a couple of different ways. Number one, you can form a legal entity like a limited liability or a corporation in your state. If you are a sole proprietor, if there's one of you or a married couple, you can get a doing business as or trade name in your state. And that allows you, instead of using your first name, like um, if it were my business, I might say Kathy's Flora Shop. I can operate under Kathy's Florishon if I want to because I'm using my own name in the business. But if I wanted to be Glorious Flower Shop, I would have to get a trade name or an Oregon 
a doing business as uh, that would allow me to operate under words that aren't related to my name. Either one of these gives you a legal start date. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Great. In, in the very beginning, when you started your presentation, you mentioned something about uh, negative and responding to negative uh, media or something. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on what all that is that you were mentioning? Absolutely. One of the three credit bureaus right now actually watches your business on Yelp, TripAdvisor, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and may even be looking at LinkedIn. And what they're doing is they're looking to see if anybody has posted a negative review. Either maybe somebody in your store said something a little snippy or negative to the customer and they decided to file a report about you. Uh, maybe they didn't like the food after they took it home. You know, negative reports can cover a lot of different territory. So what the credit bureau is looking for is if somebody posts something like that, it, that's not the issue. The issue is how fast did you respond? And did you respond in a professional manner? I have a client who responded to somebody who posted negatively about her coffee in a very nasty way that she responded to this person. I said, you, you can't do that. Well, her credit rating went down because of the way she responded. If she had said to this client, this customer, something like, uh, I'm sorry that you feel that way please come back in, we will give you a free cup of coffee to make up for it, or something that explained that maybe the coffee bean roaster that day was on the fritz and burned the beans, but to apologize, she would not have had the negative ramifications on her credit score. Okay, so really bottom line is as a business, you, um, you, you know, the customer always wins. And so Bingo. you have to respond <laughs> accordingly and, uh, and in an appropriate professional manner. Correct. And so, so that's where, where it was going. Okay. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Good question. Thank you, Kathy. That's great presentation. I see that there is a question from Leticia. What I would suggest is this to start building your business credit score. And I will be covering a lot more about this next week on Tuesday, so please come back. But in the meantime, I would suggest that you go to nav.com. It's N-A-V as in victor.com. You can put in there a profile of your business and all the information that you know. They will actually tell you what your business credit score is right now. They will make recommendations on business credit cards that do report to the different agencies. So what they do is they match you up to a credit card that they're pretty certain you're gonna qualify for. And what you can do is just make small purchases, pay it off, be a little bigger purchase and pay it off. And that will build your credit over time. Tengo otra pregunta, este, los tres años de operación que mencionan para la información del crédito positivo, pero cuando uno no tiene el IN uh -huh. y, yo, y yo tengo cinco años en operación, ¿me cuenta o a partir de que yo obtengo el IN empieza a contar? You do not need an EIN to make it count. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you have an ITIN that you've been filing your taxes under, that counts. Uh, again, what I would do is go to NAV because they give you the free credit report on all three bureaus at once, which is great. 
but they will tell you what's actually been reported about you. And there may be things you're not aware of that have positively created your credit. Sí, claro, muy buena información. Yo no sabía todas esas características que debería tener. It's an interesting world, and I took a very long, complicated series of classes on learning what you need to do to establish business credit, as well as how to position yourself to get a loan. The other thing you can do, if you don't want to do a credit card, and a lot of people don't want to do credit cards, that's fine, don't worry. Uh, there are a couple of different organizations. You can take out a small business loan if you qualify, pay the darn thing off, and you've just built your credit score. Now, will you be able to go get a $2 million loan based on paying off a $5,000 loan? No, but <laughs> you will be able to access more credit uh, through various methods. There is OAME, O-A-M-E, Oregon Association of Minority Entrepreneurs. They make loans, again, at a very low interest rate. I think it's 6%, but I'm not sure. And up to $75,000. They also do a very innovative uh, lending on accounts receivable. So I'm going to make something up here. We'll just play with it. Let's say you're a caterer and you're going to be doing a wedding for a hundred people. Well, that's a lot of food. If you have a signed uh, letter from the client who's buying the food that says, yes, I'm buying food for a hundred people. Um, my caterer, uh, yellow daffodil catering is charging me $2,000 for this. Again, I'm making it up, sorry. <clears throat> They're charging me $2,000 for that. You can take that to Awame and they will lend you 75% of what the total sale is so that you're getting 75% of that $2,000. You can then go buy the food, you can go buy the serving utensils, and then you pay them off. You pay off Awame when the client pays you off. So there are different ways of building credit. Craft 3 is another lender here locally that will make very small loans, like under 25,000, in order to help you build credit. So we've got some options here in this area. And Kathy, with us today is Yvette Falconi from Community Lending Works. Uh, okay. She also, uh, yes, so Community Lending Works also provides uh, credit building loans uh, for small businesses and a variety of other products for um, personal and for business. Thank you, Emma. I was just writing in the chat about Community Lending Works. Catherine, it was very, very interesting, the information that you gave us. Thank you so much. Um, and well, what I can say now is that Community Lending Works, it's a CDFI. So we provide uh, business loans. Um, to all those businesses that um, maybe don't uh, comply with all the requirements that a bank or maybe the, the SBA um, needs to be um, filled. So what we try, we try to help all those businesses to have access to capital. So I will be very happy to, to share more information. So I will be very happy to, to have a chat with you, Catherine. So maybe we can talk a little bit about the, all what you do and what does Community Lending Works does as well. The CDFIs, in case you were wondering, the Community Development um, financing institutions, I think, <laughs> were instrumental in the beginning of the Paycheck Protection Program round two in January. They actually were given a two-week period of time in which they could send applications in for the, per uh, the PPP for clients and get first priority on funding. So the CDFIs are a very important financial uh, 
entity in our community. If you do get questions about building your business credit, please feel free to reach out to Emma at the Beaverton Business Recovery Center or to me. I'm down in Tualatin. I do take appointments for phone and Zoom consultation. They're confidential and they're one-on-one. I don't consult as a group, so nobody is going to know your information. By the way, the Business Recovery Center was actually started last summer by um, CARES Act money that ended up in the pocket of Washington County. Washington County, based on an idea from the economic development manager in Tualatin, created four different centers throughout the county where you can get free, unlimited counseling. It's all confidential. And we help on a variety of issues, as Emma can tell you. We do everything from helping you find grants and loans to helping you evaluate the assets of another business you might be thinking of buying, to writing business plans, helping you learn how to write social media, which is one of my fortes, uh, and helping you build your business bigger and stronger than it was. So we're here to help. The other two BRCs are in Forest Grove and Hillsboro, but we are not geographically restricted. So I have sent clients to Emma in Beaverton because her specializations are different from mine. Deme dos ejemplos de que yo, mi pregunta es, de ahorita empiezo a trabajar con Emma o con Gustavo y lo que pasa es que se nos hace un poco difícil a nosotras este, seguir un, todo un proceso y de canalizar, este, sacar. Es como muchas nos detenemos porque tenemos que seguir un, un proceso. Entonces, cuando hay una asesoría que nos llevan de la mano y que no nos avientan a decir, vayan para allá, consulten allá, ahí es donde nos quedamos. Ahora, mi pregunta es si a partir de ahorita ya está mi análisis, ¿cuánto tiempo tendría, o sea, cuánto ten, tiempo pasaría para que yo ya diga, o sea, ya tienes tu, tu, lo que tú necesitas? Let me see if I can answer the question. Emma and Gustavo, if you want to add to what I'm doing, please feel free to. With the way that I do counseling, is that I set up a one hour time when I'm talking only to you. And during that time, we figure out what it is you want to do and what it is you are trying to accomplish. So we establish goals and an action plan. How long does this take? I, usually in the first hour, I can determine what it is you're trying to accomplish and give you some steps to make that occur. How long does it take for you to get these things done? I don't know, but I'm willing to hold your hand and walk you through whatever you need. So it's kind of hard to judge how long over time this is going to be. I've had clients that I've worked with for one hour, we've been able to accomplish what they needed and I never saw them again. But I have other clients that I talk to once a week because they are doing very large projects that are very, very complicated, far more complicated than what you're talking about. So it's, Something that can't be estimated as to how much time is needed. I apologize. Thank you, Kathy. I, I do agree. Everybody's goals are very different, just like everybody's businesses are very different because they come from different business ideas and different business plans, different business operators, owners. Um, and so, but what, what we do like to do is we like to meet you where you are at. We like to see, find out more about you and what your personal and business goals are. Um, we're all in different places, different stages of our business. 
um, venture. Um, so we also match you with other resources that we know in the community that can help you achieve those goals. And um, you never have to choose between one center or the other. Honestly, you can go to all of the centers, all four mm -hmm. centers and get the resources that you need to uh, meet your business goals. Um, we do encourage you to always be taking advantage of all the resources, all the other nonprofits that are also available that provide other types of services so that you can meet your goals. Some of them provide uh, the IDA, which is an individual development account. It's a savings grant and other types of grants and other types of funding and other types of workshops. Um, we, we want you to be encouraged to check it all out and see what works best for you. You never really have to be committed to one or the other. Um, we're here for your success um, and we're cheering you on um, so that you can meet those goals um, because your success is our success. Um, and we are very happy and passionate to be to be able to be part of your uh, be part of your goals and and um, meeting those goals and and finding out what those objectives may be. Um, uh, a lot of the times, in most of the time, it, running a business is a is as it's a long term commitment, and it's also a long term need for assistance. Sometimes it's just somebody um, motivating you to meet those goals or helping you find, helping you um, find different ways of meeting those goals. Um, and so we're here, Kathy, it's always a pleasure working with you. You are Thank a you. genius with everything, social media and, and everything really um, with credit building. We learned so much from you and we're so grateful for all the information you provided to us. We look forward to um, learning more next Tuesday. Um, we'll continue uh, to add more topics uh, community members are requesting. And again, uh, like we mentioned in the beginning, these uh, sessions are recorded so you can watch at a later time. Um, and we will make sure that they are available in Spanish and English. Gustavo, thank you so much for hosting us. Um, you're always uh, you. making sure that, you know, we get the best customer service. And any of you need any PPE, personal protection equipment for your business, we're still offering that from all four centers. Um, you can just go to the Washington County Business Recovery Center's website and find uh, your nearest location. Um, we got gloves, um, different types of masks and hand sanitizers. Uh, we're happy to serve you. Um, let us know if there's anything else uh, that we can help you with. And if you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to send us an email, rcconsultant at Tualatin chamber.com and on the screen that is with Kathy and uh, mine is Emma EMMA at beaverton.org or Gustavo at beaverton.org. Um, Let us know how we can help you and we do wish you a happy week and a happy weekend as well and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you everybody. Thank you Emma. Thank you everyone. Take care. <laughs>